The art of living well and the art of dying well are one. He who has peace of mind disturbs neither himself nor another. If the gods listened to the prayers of men, all humankind would quickly perish, since they constantly pray for many evils to befall one another. It is not so much our friend's help that helps us, as the confident knowledge that they will help us. I was not, I was. I am not, I care not. You don't develop courage by being happy in your relationships every day. You develop it by surviving difficult times and challenging adversity. It is folly for a man to pray to the gods for that which he has the power to obtain by himself. The wealth required by nature is limited and is easy to procure, but the wealth required by vain ideals extends to infinity. Never say that I have taken it, only that I have given it back. Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. He who is not satisfied with a little is satisfied with nothing. Accustom yourself to the belief that death is of no concern to us, since all good and evil lie in sensation, and sensation ends with death. Is God willing to prevent evil, but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able, but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? Of all the means to ensure happiness throughout the whole life, by far the most important is the acquisition of friends. Not what we have, but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. Death does not concern us, because as long as we exist, death is not here. And when it does come, we no longer exist. I have never wished to cater to the crowd, for what I know they do not approve, and what they approve I do not know. I am writing this not to many, but to you, certainly we are a great enough audience for each other. The true belief that death is nothing to us makes a mortal life happy, not by adding to it an infinite time, but by taking away the desire for immortality. We must therefore pursue the things that make for happiness, seeing that when happiness is present, we have everything, but when it is absent, we do everything to possess it. He who says either that the time for philosophy has not yet come, or that it has passed, is like someone who says that the time for happiness has not yet come, or that it has passed. We must exercise ourselves in the things which bring happiness, since, if that be present, we have everything, and if that be absent, all our actions are directed toward attaining it. If thou wilt make a man happy, add not unto his riches, but take away from his desires. If a person fights the clear evidence of his senses, he will never be able to share in genuine tranquility. A large fortune is accumulated by extremely hard work, but thus, life becomes miserable. It is not possible for a man to banish all fear of the essential questions of life unless he understands the nature of the universe and unless he banishes all consideration that the fables told about the universe could be true. Therefore a man cannot enjoy full happiness, untroubled by turmoil, unless he acts to gain knowledge of the nature of things. How unhappy are the lives of men! 
help purple in their hearts. The cry of the flesh bids us escape from hunger, thirst, and cold, for he who is free of these, and expects to remain so, might live in happiness even with Zeus. Necessity is a bad thing, but there is no necessity to live with necessity. The noble man is chiefly concerned with wisdom and friendship. Of these, the former is a mortal good, the latter an immortal one. To eat and drink without a friend is to devour like the lion and the wolf. All friendship is desirable in itself, though it starts from the need of help. I never desired to please the rebel. What pleased them, I did not learn, and what I knew, was far removed from their understanding. We should look for someone to eat and drink with, before looking for something to eat and drink. Of all the things which wisdom acquires to produce the blessedness of the complete life, for the greatest is the possession of friendship. The blessed and indestructible being of the divine has no concerns of its own, nor does it make trouble for others. It is not affected by feelings of anger or benevolence, because these are found where there is lack of strength. The opinions held by most people about the gods are not true conceptions of them, but fallacious notions, according to which awful penalties are meted out to the evil and the greatest of blessings to the good. Pleasure and pain, moreover, supply the motives of desire and of avoidance, and the springs of conduct generally. We must free ourselves from the prison of everyday affairs and politics. Men inflict injuries from hatred, jealousy or contempt, but the wise man masters all these passions by means of reason. By pleasure, we mean the absence of pain in the body, and of trouble in the soul. The just man is most free from disturbance, while the unjust is full of the utmost disturbance. It is impossible to live a pleasant life without living wisely, and well, and justly, and it is impossible to live wisely and well and justly without living pleasantly. It is not so much our friend's help that helps us, as the confident knowledge that they will help us. Moral freedom and determinism are by no means incompatible. Not what we have but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. Against other things, it is possible to obtain security, but when it comes to death, we human beings all live in an unwalled city. When you die, your mind will be gone even faster than your body. We have all seen fires die down from lack of fuel, and lights obscured or blacked out by objects coming in front of them. Empty is the argument of the philosopher, which does not relieve any human suffering. The greater the difficulty, the more the glory in surmounting it. Misfortune seldom intrudes upon the wise man. His greatest and highest interests are directed by reason throughout the course of life. Vain is the word of that philosopher which does not heal any suffering of man. There is nothing terrible in life for the man who has truly comprehended that there is nothing terrible in not living. It is better for you to be free of fear lying upon a pallet than to have a golden couch and a rich table and be full of trouble. 
Fools are tormented by the memory of former evils. Wise men have the delight of renewing in grateful remembrance the blessings of the past. We have the power both to obliterate our misfortunes in an almost perpetual forgetfulness and to summon up pleasant and agreeable memories of our successes. Let no one be slow to seek wisdom when he is young, nor weary in the search of it when he has grown old. For no age is too early or too late for the health of the soul. He who least needs tomorrow will most gladly greet tomorrow 